All righty, go, go ahead. All right, everyone, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today. And today I figured it would be kind of fun to show you how to customize the default property widget or even a themed template widget. So it, you know, you can use the one out of the box, easy peasy to install and get in place, but you can also kind of hijack these quote unquote little bunny ears around the hijack there and appropriate them. So they're more speaking to what you want to link to your site instead of just maybe multifamily houses or condos or land. So uh, one thing I do want to point out here is a big in here. If you've already had custom work done on your website, you may not want to proceed at this point because if you replace something and update without having a backup of that code available, whether I did the work for you via a custom setup, which I do save that code work, or you had it done through professional services, they also save it. Make sure you've got that backed up code saved before you supersede anything with a widget or change it up because once it's gone, it's gone if you don't have a copy. There's no undo. Uh, so with that said, your caution is in place and now we are going to proceed with caution, which is probably what a Def Leppard album back in the day. I don't remember. It's been too long. So anywho, let's talk about the widget that actually comes as default on your site. So right now we're looking at my default website tied to my demo site. So this is basically the hero template. I did add a video in here, which all of you can add in, which we won't cover today, but there is a video on background images and background videos in the uh, support articles. You can access 24 seven. So let's scroll down just a titch here. And generally speaking, when you get your website, the moment you have access to KD Core, you're gonna have all of this here for you. So you're gonna have a background image in place. You're going to have your own subdomain information, or if you brought your own vanity domain, domain it'll be here. And the system will automatically load in this widget that has multifamily, houses, land, and condos. But what if you're looking at this going, yeah, that's nice, but you know, maybe in my area, we don't have a lot of land. Maybe we're all about vertical living because I'm in the city and this is kind of like a wasted widget wasteland for me. What am I gonna do with this? Uh, or maybe there aren't many single family houses, it's more vertical with condos and multifamily or townhouse or co-ops. You can actually hijack any of these and direct people to something more specific that speaks to your business. And this is something where you might be thinking, oh, okay, this sounds like a little beyond what I'm comfortable with. I'm starting to feel a little uneasy, like clowns or math is in my life again, and I don't like it. Uh, so basically, I'm just going to tell you that you can do this once you kind of see some little ins and outs of how to do it. So I know it looks daunting initially when you see all the code we're going to look at it sitting behind all of this. However, once you start seeing how it all laces together in that code, I think you'll get into a groove. And uh, once you get a couple of these under your belt and play around with it, you're going to be just fine. And I can, I'm really confidently saying that because if I can do it and learn it, you can too. Because initially when I looked at this, I was like, uh, what in the who now? Uh, but then after I got a couple under my belt, I'm like, okay, this is not as scary as I thought it might be. And now this is all I do every day basically is do coaching setups and more coaching and setups. So it's my life. So what we're going to do is access the back end of this code. So we're going to go back into our dashboard and you're going to scroll down this right hand side of your dash and you're going to click on your website manager. Now to access the way to edit this code that's here, once you're on your website manager, you know, here's a little bit of an aside. If you are an admin for a company office team, choose your website accordingly. So if you're going to do something for your office, choose your office site. If you're doing something for a team member, do that. If you're doing something for a uh, company or your office or a team as a whole, choose that site. So, you know, choose wisely. So I'm going to do my own agent site tied to this account. So if you're an agent, this is all you're going to see. Or if you have two websites, or some of you do, you might click in here and you'll be able to choose which one you want to affect change on. Okay, that said, 
what we're going to do now is go to our site editor. There's a few ways we can do that. We can either click here on the right for go to site editor or right below it where it says template, go to site editor. Both will get me to that same destination. So when I open this up now, I have to be cognizant that I am working in a live environment. So just keep that in mind as you're affecting change here. And Christian's dropping some great information in for you. If you have questions, please go ahead and type them in and we'll be sure to loop back to those. And if it's something unrelated to uh, the actual web information we're doing right now, we'll loop back to it when the Q&A opens up. So now if we scroll down a little bit, we're on the live open environment. You'll see now we have these tools in place. Now, right now, if someone was to click on multifamily condos, houses, or land, the system would take me automatically to those particular listings in the entirety of the area of which I cover. But let's say I want to repurpose these little guys. The first thing you can do is you can rename this. So maybe I want this to be new construction homes. You know, I can go over here, and if I want to rename this, you're going to want to put your cursor at the very end of the name and back your cursor up deliberately and slowly. Don't wipe out the whole line. Then start typing and leave like the first letter in and type in the, the, the like the uh, description. Maybe it's new construction properties. Once you have that there, then get rid of the M. If you don't do this, it's going to change the font, change the color and the size, <laughs> and, and you might get eye twitchy. So just back it all the way up to that last character. Like on this one, it's the M for multifamily and then get rid of it after you've typed in the new label. Now, if I wanna get rid of this automatic pull for 145 listings, what I wanna do is highlight this and then I'm going to click this little code guy. So you'll recognize this icon from when you might be going to grab videos from YouTube if you're going to embed it somewhere like in a blog or wow. a custom page. Look at this. So nice. when you go to share on YouTube and you want to share your embed code or grab that embed code, it's that same icon. So you can kind of recognize that as code information. So this would be a the video code. So if I wanted to grab that information, I would just click this icon, which then matches up with this one right here, like for the kind of a universal code icon. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what this is going to do is bring me right to that section. You're going to see where the 145 is highlighted in this entire line of code. And at first you might look at this and you might be like, nope, I'm out. <laughs> it's just, you know, I'm not sure I'm ready for this, but basically what it's showing you is this is that little string of code within that entirety of the code for that uh, new construction. Also, as we look at this, well, actually first what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna delete that whole section. It's already highlighted. I'm just gonna click backspace and get rid of it. I'm gonna remove that counter. So again, you'll click on it after you've highlighted it. It'll show you the highlighted information. It's highlighted blue and then just click backspace and it gets rid of that little line of highlighted uh, code. Now I want to explain a couple of other things you're going to see while you're in here as well. You'll see here is where I had renamed it. And then right above it. You're going to see the link for what we're pointing people to for the property right here. So it's everything within these two little quotation marks where it says href equals quotation, then index, and then the .com. This is where that link is going to be. Right above that, you'll see the image that it's associated to. So every time you look at this section, when you like look at a specific thing like a new construction properties, houses, condos, what have you here, you can highlight the name, Click your little code icon. Now you'll see new construction properties is there. Right above it is the link we'll be sending people to. And then right above that 
is the image tied to the uh, tile? So let me check to see if there's any questions so far to see uh, anything here. Now, some of you may have a dashboard that it's it's possible that your brokerage has given you uh, back and if you know access to some things and not to others that can be decided when a brokerage is setting up uh, admin and permissions but generally speaking most of you should have access to this unless you have uh, something special created by your broker so right now if we close this again by clicking the little link here right now we have this uh, for new construction properties now what we want to do is go grab a link for my new construction property. So I have my website open here. So I'm just gonna to pop to my site and I'm just gonna go up here to search. And let's just say I'm pulling this for uh, a county. And dash pass, I love you, but I hate you. <laughs> let's get that out of there. Uh, so let's say we're doing something like a San Diego County or something. So I'm gonna pull all San Diego County single family homes. So I'm gonna remove condos, multifamily land, townhouses. So you can make this, or I could include these you know, in it, right? And I'm gonna remove uh, farm and ranch rentals and do villas, single family, condo, multifamily and townhouse for newly built. Then I'm gonna go down here, click newly built. Then I'm going to click apply filter. And this is going to give me the results for all of the new bills that have those types of properties within. All right, so here's our results. New builds, not many really for, for a whole county. Uh, now, when we're grabbing the link, we're not going to include our .com information here. We're gonna omit our domain information. We're gonna pick everything up from that forward slash all the way east to the end of that link. So all the way to the RSLT. So when you look at this, you're gonna skip your name in the .com and you're going to place your cursor before that forward slash and then copy the whole shebang. And we're going to use this. So we're gonna copy. Then we're going to go back to our site that's live and open. We're going to just click on the view list here. And this is where you can edit your link really easily. So you can edit it right here. If you use the combination of control A, it'll choose everything that's currently there. And then you can delete it and then just paste in your new link. So again, when I first jumped into this, it had this link attached to it. So I used control A, and I believe that's command A on a Mac, I, I believe. Uh, and then you can delete it and put your new link in and click update. And now we've actually reappropriated this for new construction properties and the link. And now we need to get rid of that townhouse picture because I mean, we could use it, but does it really in, is it really indicative of a new build? Do we want to throw something up that's like, you know, uh, wooden beams, you know. And Patricia's saying, so this link remains valid, even though the content changes. That is uh, home uh, availability changes. Yes, this is an evergreen link. So it's much like your squeeze pages, much like a squeeze page you put into a landing page, much like your listing alert links that go out and people click on something that's most up to date. We're always pulling the most up to date information we can from your MLS because it lives on your website and on your dashboard, which is pretty cool. So let's say we want to replace the image. So I've actually started using a service called IB or IMGBB, but it's basically a place where I'm able to upload images. And these images, like I did this for an EXP person the other day, these images, when I click this little share code where it says embed codes, it actually gives me the ability to pull a direct link, which is what we're going to use when we create a new image for new construction. So you need to use some type of something like photo bucket uh, or uh, IMGBB or something like that that gives you a direct link ending in PNG or JPEG, basically. 
Uh, just a, a quick side note, guys. Uh, IMGBB technically isn't associated with. Oh uh, yes, it is a third real party. Estate. It yeah. is a third party, but it, it is kind of a trusted one. Like they're, they're a legit site. You can Google them. They have a full background and stuff. So uh, just be aware. Uh, yeah. And I believe they have free accounts, right? That's what I'm using right now. <laughs> yeah. I'll pop for the upgrade when I when they make me. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know yeah. uh, i'll be like well no all right and then i'll put it in the cart and see if i get a promo code right <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so um okay so let's say we have our image and i think i have a new construction one in here if not we'll just we'll find one and create one uh let's see so i've got quite a few pictures in here let me it'll go down to the bottom because that's where it would normally be if i did all right, it doesn't look like the new construction we made it over here. So, oh, here, like, here we go. So let's say we want to use this as our new construction image. All I need to do is have it uploaded here. Click on embed codes, direct link ending in JPEG, give it a copy. And then I can go back to my site. I'm going to highlight new construction properties, click my little code icon. Then I'm going to look above and I'm going to highlight everything within that little parenthesis up there. And then I'm just going to paste my link on top of it. So now we've effectively replaced the Amazon laws uh, default for multifamily with my new construction JPEG. When I click this code button again, you'll see that image right here. Very cool. Yeah. Now let's say you have, uh, and Bron is saying, is it free? It is to a point, I'm sure. They just haven't pushed me to buy it yet. <laughs> so I'm sure there's levels. I haven't really dug into it. Um, so let's say you have your own construction image that you found or you purchased or that you want to use. Uh, so I am going to go to I am, uh, IBB here and just go to another folder. So the first thing I'm gonna do so I try to keep these somewhat organized, right? And then I can say create new album. And I'm just going to call this like my default uh, type widgets. And then I'm going to save it and then start uploading images. So I can create an album and then I can click upload image. So I'm just gonna choose something at random here. I'm just gonna say, maybe, maybe we want to use this image as our background like the map itself, mm. you know? What you can do here is you can use any type of print screen uh, or, or screen copying software. I happen to use light shot screenshot, so I can just click print screen. It darkens up the whole screen. And then I have the ability to draw what I want to capture. So mm. usually I'll just grab this whole thing. I will save it. You know, I'll name it uh, what was that San Diego County, I believe. So I'm going to name it, and then I'm going to save it to my hard drive on my laptop. Then I'm going to go over here to the IBB into this default type widget uh, album, and I'm going to upload the image. And you'll see here. It says new construction, San Diego County. So that's the one I want to grab, open, and I'm going to upload it into this album. Should just take less than a couple of seconds here. So now I can go right here and click direct link, copy. I can go back to this. And let's say I don't like that image, then I'll just highlight this again, go into my code. Go to that step above where you see the image here. So I go within the parentheses. Paste it in. And now I have my new construction, San Diego County. And it might take a moment for that to load in. Mm. Or I might have grabbed the wrong link. I might have done something there, but it should. There we go. There it it just took a second. Yeah, I just had to render on the other site. Yeah. So basically, it's really easy to finesse these backgrounds and pull them right off of your website. That's cool. Quite honestly. Can, uh, can I add just one little piece to this? Um, yeah. Because if you you wear glasses like me, Annalise, we have bad eyes. I sure eyes. do. <laughs> yes. All right. So um, do you, uh, maybe you know about this. Maybe you don't. 
but can you show them the control F feature with Google Chrome? Just hold control and then F and you see that right up there. You see that oh, bar yeah, yeah. that just that's appeared? Yes. So like on, yeah, that's a great, the best little shortcut. I, this even works in baby core. <laughs> yeah, I use that. I use that with any kind of coding view. So if you if you go back to the source code view there, because mm -hmm. you're gonna get lost like I oh, do. Oh yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I and, know what you're talking and about. And you just look up background image, mm -hmm. and you can find where that is, and everything that's highlighted there. Okay. Mm -hmm. The parentheses that comes after those. That's where the images are. Yep. All right. Yeah, I, I usually find myself a lot of the time just looking for something when I could just use that. Because yeah. if you guys are like me, <laughs> you can't see it unless it's just printed in bold right in front of you. So yeah, I get it. And and that's the other thing you can also, you know, do your control plus to zoom in. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Which, you know, myself, I do that. Plus I use the uh, find and I found I'm holding my glasses up on my forehead to look at stuff like my dad used to, which is a little <laughs> alarming, but we're not going to get into that. <laughs> but you kind of get what I'm saying. It's like you look at this and, you, and after a while you're like, okay, eyes, what, what are you doing? Uh, but so, so far right now we've actually gone in and we've been able to reappropriate this tile for new construction, give it a new link and a new look. So we've kind of given a little, you know, facelift. So to repeat the process, let's say you wanted to uh, turn this one into recruiting, right? Mm -hmm. So then you could highlight the 1312 listings. Uh, that's my pickle fingers as Kelly would say. Uh, and then I'm gonna go over here to delete that span. Then I'm going to close it up again and then I will rename it. So this might be like, you know, join my team. So again, mm -hmm. I'm going to backspace all the way to that first character and then join my team. Then I'll get rid of that first character. If you do it the other way and get rid of everything first, you are going to get eye twitchy. So don't do it. Then I'm going to change it view list here because I don't really want to see a list when I'm pointing to someone to like, you know, career or recruiting. I am going to hover over view list. And I can do the same thing. I can back it all the way to that first character and say, you know, like um, learn about opportunities with whatever you're going to put in here. But I imagine like if you, if you have a brokerage and they have shared with you recruiting information, you might have some verbiage you can pull of that's got corporate approved or message approved for proprietary reasons. Mm -hmm. So you can always talk with your, uh, you know, your brokerage to see if there's information you can pull and connect and use and all that. But it just could be Very basically cool. like learn about opportunities. Can Can I ask here, Annalisa? Absolutely. Does, does this work with only our default widgets or can we, I would say, use like the other layouts by chance? Yep, it, all of can't, them. It can. All right, cool. Yes. Awesome. <laughs> That's why I love it. So <laughs> yeah, I'm reappropriating like no other. Awesome, awesome. So let's say you have a careers link. So let, I'm just gonna go to inside real estate and pull ours just as an example here. So let's say you have your careers link. I'm just gonna pull this one, copy. So we have our careers link, then we just need to hover over, click on the link, click on edit, choose the whole thing and get rid of it by overlapping it with our new career link. So now it'll say, join my team, learn about opportunities, update. So now we've actually appropriated the link and the title. And now we just need to have a picture in the background. So let's say we wanna go find a join our team image. There are some easy ways you can do this. The first one is just going into Google, join my team images. And if you want to find images that are copyright free and open for use, click tools, usage rights, creative commons licenses. This means they are open call for anyone to use. And it might be slim pickings here because people want to be paid for their work, you know, for their images, they create the art, the information. The other thing you can do is go to a site like Pexels or Pixabay. 
something like that. These are also free sources. So this one is Pexels. I've used Canva before. And, oh, I haven't done Canva yet, yeah, uh, but, but these Canva. are ones I use a lot. Yeah. But this is where you can put in keywords such as, you know, we're hiring or we're, we're recruiting or whatever you want it to be. You know, you can put in the keyword here. All of these images are free for you to grab and use at will. So maybe good vibes only. Maybe you'll really like that image or join us or what have you. But let's say we like this image. We can click on it. And then it has free download. Bam. Download that baby. Throw Cotton Bro a dollar or two to say thanks for providing this work since I didn't have to go find it and pay for it. Here's an interesting question. Uh, mm -hmm. Patricia just asked, do the images have to be a certain size? I haven't found that, that they have to be a certain size. Okay. Um, I haven't really run into an issue, but if you get, if you get a sticky wicket on something, I can certainly look at it, but I haven't seen any wonkiness happen there. I've I've just heard even numbers are always best when uh, using an image. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, just just from like like a, a standard point, right. uh, a, a number that is very common with like our customization uh, tools is 800 by 600. So uh, that's that's kind of a good way to do it. But honestly, with these widgets, it'll probably just recenter it and mm -hmm. focus on like you know, if you if you put in a 1080p image there, it's just going to focus on the center. Yeah. Uh, okay, so now we've downloaded this image. Now we can go over to our uh, IBB, our uploading, you know, where we have our receptacle for uh, images. And I've got my album, I'm just going to create a new album at the top here. And you know, maybe we'll just call this recruiting. I'll upload my image. And then I'll go to my documents downloaded. I'll grab my Pexels image, upload with open. And really, after you get a couple of these under your belt, you could probably go through and give your website a little zhuzhing up within a day. Mm -hmm. And then you can update different calls to actions and links through the seasons, through whatever you want to offer, what have you. Uh, but I'm going to click direct link. Now I've got my direct link. I'm going to click copy. Then I'm going to make sure I've got join my team highlighted. Click my code icon. And then right above this, we'll see the houses right here. And you're going to paste in that link, close the code, and it's going to take a second to render again, just like I did a moment ago. I'm usually working on one of these all day, so I've never noticed if it kind of is slow to load. Uh, but now it's in there. So now if I was to save this, I can click my little diskette here, right? Anybody ever remember diskettes? Uh, <laughs> you click at the diskette for save, click OK. And then on my page that I had open that I did my search, I'm just going to go over here and uh, go to the front side of my site to refresh it. And we'll scroll down a titch and you'll see these two things are in place now. So now if I click here, it's going to take me right to where I want, where I want to be directed. If I click new construction properties. You know, it's going to take me right to those new construction properties in San Diego County. So it's a really slick way of, you know, taking care of this information. And Patricia's saying, hey, for the new construction link you created, you took a link name viewed properties, any particular reason? Yeah, what well, it's important when you grab that link up here for it to work correctly, since we already have, it's already being connected to your subdomain or your domain as an agent or user if you just pull the index only section to the right. That's how it works best. And then because I created something unique, you'll see here that the tab up here has it matched to new construction. So it's going to pull that link that we named right here. 
So it does give you that new little name tab, which is also pretty nice. Is that what you were referring to, Patricia? I think it was. All right. Uh, any other questions that have come through? I'm kind of looking through the questions. Looks like we got most of them, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, guys, if you have any other questions uh, about this topic, please feel free to shoot them uh, at us. Yeah. But also, if you have any questions about anything else, let us yep. know. And Annalisa, uh, if you if you're done with sharing what you wanted to, uh, maybe I can maybe just add on a little bit here uh, towards the end and I can share my screen. Yeah, no problem. I did want to point out since you'd asked about the other widgets, like the little one by ones, mm, sure, right? Go for it, there's go also for it. the template and the one by one widgets. So what we're looking at here on this site is the default, uh, the default like mm -hmm. property view which did come standard on everyone. And then we took and changed these two things up. You can also add in individual widgets below that by going into Web and IDX, Website Manager, choose your domain correctly. If you're an admin for office company or team, if you're an, ad, if you're a, a agent, you're gonna see your domain only. Then click on widgets. What you can do is maybe you want to say, hey, you know what? I want to add an open house widget. I would love to add uh, a financing widget, whatever it happens to be. So if you don't see, maybe we go over here and we don't see open houses, but we want to add an open house widget to your site. Well, we go over here. Okay, all right, where is it? Click add. And that's going to bring the copy of the widget over here so I can put it on my own website. So I'm going to Click add to bring a copy of that widget into my own uh, folder. And I'm just gonna click add. Now, if I'm an admin, I do have the ability to edit these a little bit, but because a regular agents do not. So as an agent, you'll just click add. And then I would say append with these. It's gonna add an open house widget below this when I, re when I reload this. So I'm gonna right click and reload the site. And you'll kind of see what that little tile looks like. So whenever you're adding these little onesie widgets, add two at a time to give it balance. Those are with the default widgets, right? Yep. Now, another thing you can do here real quickly is if you want to put featured listings or featured information or something. When you're editing your site, if I go to my site editor here, You can actually type in here, guys. It's really easy. So let's say you want to add in a little something up here. What I'll do normally to get a cursor here is I'll go into code view. And I'll just put a dot and then enter, enter, and give myself a little room here. And then I'll close my code view. You can kind of see how that gave me a little wiggle room here. And this is where I could say featured listings and information. But now, whatever you need to put here. I will highlight it, slap a little bold on there, 30. I can click on here and change my font. I can also move to center. And I can click this little drop and say, you know what? I'm feeling festive today. We're gonna make this red or orange or blue or green. Uh, but you can change all that up. Click your little diskette to save it. Then when you reload, you'll see all of those differences. So now you can see I've got my open house widget. I've got my appropriated new construction, join my team, condos and land. I've got my custom uh, verbiage here. So there's all sorts of little things you can do here to uh, take a look at things. And is it, who's talking, is it uh, Veronica? Veronica, why don't you drop me an email, A. Dolan? And I'll take a look at what is available to your site and I'll let you know, if anything. Uh, so I just dropped my email. Anybody had questions on what we went over today, just let me know. I'm happy to, if you reach out and say, now what in the, huh? I'll be happy to go, okay, here's how you do it. No problem. Uh, now, if we're looking to do different types of widgets, you've got the web and IDX and settings. At the top here, you'll see template homepage widgets. 
Now, these are a different animal than those standalone widgets or that default property widget that we were looking at. When you view examples here, this is the standard one out of the box that everything comes with. You can also adjust the standard full screen, which basically gets rid of these gutters. So you don't have any uh, you know, vacant real estate on your page, no pun intended, right? Uh, so it presses things out to the breadth and the depth of your site. Or you can do modern and it includes your website information, your background information, thinking of selling, looking to purchase, get pre-approved or find valuable resources. Or your search starts here, what's my home worth? Instant listing alerts, get pre-approved. So you got modern, modern side-by-side, -side, standard centered, standard full screen, and luxury that has what's my home worth, meet the team, get pre-approved. The easiest one by far to affect change on are the moderns and the default. Luxury is a bit of its own animal. I've had to kind of finesse that one. So I can show you how to, to finesse it uh, if we need to. But let's say we want to add in modern side by side. It's kind of groovy looking. When I add this, it's going to replace my default widget. So what I'll do is I'm going to go in here and I'm going to click on my code and I'm going to control A to choose all or highlight and choose all. And then I'm gonna copy this and I'm gonna put it somewhere safe like in a keep file or a Google email or a doc. But I wanna have this on hand so I can add the other information and then bring this back. If I did the work, it's done. I just don't wanna lose it. So I'm just gonna call this my default tiles. and put it in keep. Now, if I go back into my dashboard, I'm going to click into my template homepage widget and I'm going to click modern side by side. And I'm going to click save and that's going to overwrite everything I just did, but I saved the code. So I'm not gonna lose it and go cry and get twitchy. <laughs> so I'm gonna click yes, replace the existing layout. Now, if I go to my site, right now it's got those four tiles. If I reload this, it's going to have the modern side-by-side -side and this other thing will be gone. We'll be able to bring it back. So now we have the modern side-by-side -side here, which looks pretty good. I like it a lot. And I'm gonna go back to my Google Keep or wherever I save that code right here. Then I'm going to do an Alt A to choose, Control C or Control A to choose everything, Control C to copy. I'm gonna go back in here and I'm going to put my cursor in above, right at that P at that top left. I'm gonna just move that text down a bit. It doesn't really affect much, but give me a little wiggle room. I'm gonna paste in the code and then I'm going to close the code. Now you can see I've got these in here, but featured listings and information has kind of brought itself up, right? So now I can just hit enter and bring it down until it's adjusted. And if I need to get rid of a line, I can just back up or make that, that a smaller thing. So instead of like whatever font that is, I can just kind of highlight this. And then I can go up here and make my font size an eight to make that gap smaller. Uh, but the point is you wanna make sure you adjust it. Then you click your uh, save button. And then when I refresh, we'll see the work that we just completed added to the modern side-by-side -side at the top. So now we've got the work we completed plus the open house widget we added and then our featured listings and information right below it. So you have these options. Um, myself, I, I, I tend not to use the little single widgets much anymore because I love that you have these pre-builts that you can add in. And for some reason that didn't update all the way on me. I must've I must have done something funky. Uh, but basically you can add those pre-builts in and then you know have a ball uh, updating different uh, images and logos and links and so forth.
And uh, that's all I have had to say. Uh, and then when you're done, of course, always go back in, click your code view, you know, go in here and then, you know, why did it skip forward? I love, I love Comcast sometimes. Uh, you can go into your code view, copy that finished, you know, link of information. So you'd go back in. Oh, good grief, I'm struggling. I'm on the struggle bus, Christian. Help. <laughs> I'll go into your site editor. Then you'll click your little embed code guy, choose all, copy, and then save your code somewhere. So in case in the future you accidentally wipe something out and you're like, then you can rest easy and be like, oh, that's right. I saved my code. Everything's cool. So uh, that is the last I had to say there. So I always say, go with caution, go purposefully, go methodically, and you should be fine. Uh, hopefully this has been a good amount of time spent with everyone to kind of say like, you know what, this is not as scary at all. So hopefully this helped you kind of look at this like, you know what, I can do this, or I'm going to learn how to do this. So thanks for being here. Well, thank you, Annalise. I appreciate you showing that off today. Um, Patricia's just wondering if you could just show her where you found that modern side-by-side -side change. It's it's right there yeah. in the website settings, Patricia. Yeah. So you just hover Web and IDX, and then you'll see website settings that you'll click on. And you'll be brought right to this page and you'll see the modern side-by-side -side look and you can just change the layout of those yep and then you can see what their layouts are right here cool cool yeah. now annalisa uh I, I don't know if you want to hand it over or not but you bet. there is there's one thing that i wanted to kind of show off with these these widgets and this is a little off kilter like this isn't um something that we were looking at per se but it's something that you can utilize after you have these widgets ready. Mm -hmm. um, so let me share my screen here. And what I'm mainly talking about is getting these widgets here, okay, on a landing page. Seriously, just, just do exactly that. Uh, so if you are looking to start a, a home search, right? Uh, let's just go ahead and see if I can go up oh, right here. So if you're looking to start a home search, okay, get started here. It's got that widget. This is just a base default one. So if you guys want to, you can use this exactly as is. But the idea with these widgets and the results is getting people to them, okay? So one of the big areas that you can utilize this with is back in Gavy Core. And again, I said we were going off in a little bit of a different direction, but in the lead engine, building out a landing page that directs specifically mm -hmm. to that widget. So I'll go ahead. I'm just a regular agent. I'm not as special as Annalisa, but I'll go ahead and start building my site. <laughs> I can make you an admin. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just kidding. But <laughs> with, with that said, right here, you know, including stuff like this, you know, listing alerts get pre-approved. So where these are directing leads to, okay, this is probably a great one to have. Have questions about real estate? Ask me. That's it. So what I'm going to do here is it's going to guide the contacts back to me through this page. This is that widget. Yep. So I'm just going to copy the URL here, go back to my landing page builder and paste this in. Now, everything about this page, I'll, I'll talk about it, like questions about real estate. Put in the question, I don't have to have much in here. Okay. Uh, and I'll just say, click below for details. Right. And instead of just a basic lead generation landing page, I'm not going to try and generate leads off of this, but I am going to try and get usage from these widgets. So like a more of a, a marketing than an advertising. Mm -hmm. So this is a marketing yeah. to get your image out, get people to know who you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And and just like Annalisa did earlier, you can change the background of this landing page. I'm not going to go into too many specifics here today, uh, but we'll just do uh, family on the couch or uh, maybe just senior couple on a dock there. We'll stick with that one. And once this is ready, okay, they're going back to this page here. Uh, I'm going to change this submit button text to say, click here. For questions or for answers, that's better. All right. And then we save this. Now, here's the thing, guys. You don't have to use this right away. Once you save these landing pages, okay, just bookmark it, store it for later. 
just kind of like you did with the code, just kind of like you did with the pictures and everything that you have. Christian, you're, I think we may able. Uh oh, am I still there? Did Are I get you out disconnected? there? Okay. It, no, it got really fast, but it might have been on my side. I'm not sure. Go ahead. Okay. No worries. So bookmark these pages and then afterwards, share it to Facebook, share it to Twitter, do whatever you'd like to with it. But it's just recommended that you have a, a, a landing page for each of these widgets. What's your home worth? Instant alerts. Just marketing yourself, mm -hmm. utilizing these widgets. Okay. These are tools, right? And the thing is, is that you have contacts that might see these landing pages. And while sure it's it's you know nice and nifty for that one person or or set of leads, it's at least just getting the the idea in their head. That's it. Once once you put it in there, there's there's this really great movie that I, I watched. It's you guys have probably all seen it, Inception, right? Mm -hmm. Where you get somebody to think of something and they think it's yeah. their idea. And, right. they, and it's true, it, it kind of is. They have to be the one to come up with it, but it doesn't mean you can't push them towards it, right? So setting up these different widgets with the different landing pages is just a nice way to market the different tools that you have. And this is something that uh, I would say not a lot of real estate agents have outside of KV Core. I mean, yeah. the fact that you have every single tool from the search, the sell, the financing to your info, all market in a reports, single place, market alerts, reports, search alerts. properties. Yep, <laughs> yeah. exactly. All of this is in one place for a contact. Gone are those days where people have to go to Zillow because I'll tell you right now, I hate Zillow. Just from a, a personal consumer standpoint, it's terrible. But if you give me something like this, the fact that I can get you know, a search alert, yeah. uh, a valuation, a market report, all just by going to your website, of course I'm going to use you. And I get and to I talk with a person. <laughs> And I think to add on to that, you know, every time I have a coaching call, I, I really, and then what, what Christian is speaking to here is what well, you can also pepper these into your smart campaigns, into mm -hmm. your texts, into your custom text codes. You know, these yep. can be part of your marketing to further lead people in for retargeting on Facebook as they go to your page and go to, go to your website. So, yeah. you know, every, every piece of the pie that you create within KV Core can actually lend itself to other facets mm -hmm. of your business. Yeah. Uh, and then pretty soon you have a whole suite of tools created that you just pull from every day. Kind of like the property search of the day that Ryan and I are always, always talking about like, hey, you know what? Go and create your landing page, create your squeeze page and just use those again and again because the pages are evergreen. They update mm -hmm. every day from the yeah. MLS. So. Yeah, yeah, I would, I would definitely possibilities. recommend exactly what Annalise is saying in, in setting up some marketing tools, Yeah, right? Add a template, maybe build it an email or, you know, maybe just a simple text template, right? Uh, question texts. Yep. All right. Have any questions? Tap here. and get more info. Okay. And whoops, not the three, but the <laughs> E, I'll copy this. Link. That was almost like a purposeful good one. Right. <laughs> you know, like you're like, you're just typing. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I could just put that link in there and just save this, right? It's a template. And now for the future, I can set it up in one of my campaigns, remember. Or even send it as a one-off. Yeah, just send it as a text to a, a couple of contacts. Uh, let's just maybe set up a filter for those or leads that have been asking a lot of questions regardless. Just check those boxes, send out that text message. There's the questions. Uh, did I not build one out? Um, maybe I built it in as an email. No, no, I set it up as a text. You did a text, yeah. Uh, maybe it's just not there yet. And then just real quick, Patricia had a question. Hey, can I embed Calendly into my KB Core? Yes, you can. I just put a YouTube link into chat that covers that. Okay, cool. Um, Patricia, uh, I did see your question about uh, retargeting. And I will say that we've actually had a couple of next level trainings already about that. And that reminds me what I'm going to do with you guys right now is share our YouTube channel with you. Uh, the, the video is gonna be uh, of today 
the recording, excuse me, is going to be on uh, a Google Doc here, and I'll share that in just a second or reshare it there. Uh, but the YouTube channel is going to have all of our videos uploaded with timestamps and hopefully uh, making sure that you guys can just jump over to what you're looking for. Uh, so let me just share this channel here. And guys, take a view of it. And I'll also share the playlist for the next level strategies. I'll share this one here. Nice. Make sure it goes out. And share it here. Good All righty. So uh, with that said, uh, let me go ahead and make sure that you guys get that link uh, to the recordings. Guys, it's going to be on this, this document here, this Google document. And we're going to be using this next level strategies tab here. We should make that a different color. Yeah, well, we'll probably change some stuff around here to make sure that you guys see this. Uh, but we're going to have this set up for you. And you're going to have that recording uh, probably in about 30 minutes, maybe an hour, depending on how fast Zoom gets to it. Uh, we'll place it right here for you. So let me share this link with you guys make sure you jump into it okay awesome now, with all of that said i think i might just uh leave the floor open and see if anyone has any questions for just anything i mean you could ask me if i think who's going to win the super bowl next uh go That's chiefs my... oh chiefs <laughs> wow the people i housed it for have season tickets so no, it's, okay. I, I it's a little self-serving right but i'm like <laughs> go chiefs <laughs> But yeah, guys, uh, hopefully you got a lot out of today. 49ers, there you go. <gasps> <All right. laughs> uh, hopefully you guys got a lot out of today. Uh, obviously, we want to make these next level trainings kind of like, you know, the, the, the next wave of how you can use this system uh, for your own standards. Uh, and and saying, oh, go ahead. Do, okay, I was going to say, and saying, hey, I'm an ISA, which, which is how I started out. And bless you for doing that job. Uh, how can I see my agent's tasks? So, Anne, are you logging in as the agent or via the admin access? Because if, if you are an admin, uh, probably the best way to, to view the task admin. Okay, okay. is just to open up the lead profile. Yeah. Okay. And from there, you can see a tasks section. Clicking on that will bring up any upcoming as well as the completed tasks on top of that. So you can view that. And right. I can't remember if there is a filter for uh, I'm tasks not... in the CRM. I'm, I'm trying to remember if it's in the bottom in behavior. Um, I'm like, okay, let me look at this. Is there, there has to be something. So I'm not, I'm not sure if it has a, no. uh, a filter in the tasks section, but what I am aware of yeah. is that you can always filter for the activity in the timeline. For sure. So, so that way you can see all the nodes, the tasks, everything that was accomplished from the agent's end. Yep. All right. I was trying to see if there was a different way and if you could sort it on the, I think you should be able to look at them as just the agent on their summary, but I may be incorrect on that. Yes, yes, the, yeah. the summary as yeah. the agent. Okay, yep. now for the activity, or I'm sorry, for their summary, you can't do that as the admin. It's always right. going to display your personal summary. That's why it's called my summary, not right. yours. Um, let me see here. Uh, I was hoping to just see the tasks instead of going into the lead. Yeah, unfortunately, you do have to open up the contact, but that's an interesting idea there. And I like and you, it. Yeah, you can definitely throw that idea towards us, see if it sticks, because our engineers will look at your guys' ideas. And if it's something possible, and if it's something that does improve the system, like what you're suggesting, we'll probably add it and uh, get back to you as, as far as the course of action that goes after. Yeah, there's a groovy little feature request item within the chat with support. You can actually click on submit a feature request and get it submitted to the peepers of our engineer team. Very cool. Very cool. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and, and bring this up. Bob, you did ask, is the smart search automatically created with a property boost? Um, you know, I'm not too uh, aware of that. Are you familiar at all? If there's Only if they go to your site 
so so the way so the way like the save your bacon search works for with in kb core is if you have a contact go to your website and click on a property and view a property the system is going to create an alert for you for the mm -hmm. contact based on what they've looked at so far yep now one thing to always pay attention to if our system sets one up for you for the contact is we're going to pull up a, a a property expansive like uh expansive like top to bottom mm -hmm. that and could be off on the typical expanse you might pull for listings so instead of like you know 7.5 seven, 750,000 to 980,000 or 900 I, or to 400 or like a yeah. million it might say 728 to 820 mm -hmm. So you're going kind of to want to go number. in there and finesse those uh, yeah. as you can. Yeah. So it, it does like averages. And mm -hmm. the way I'll put it this way here, Bob, if you have a summary collected with uh, the contact, meaning data to go along with their registration, we can formulate that search, that, that search alert automatically. That's, well, that's, that's something and, that can happen. And if you're running a property boost, it always starts with PB, like PB for property mm -hmm. boost. And then the first 15 characters of the, the property. Yep. So if it's 123 Main Street, it'll be it'll be PB 123 Main Street. And mm -hmm. that is a consistent formula. So you can take that tag because you know what it's going to be. Yeah. You can go into your hashtag alerts via marketing. So you're going to hover over marketing, all marketing. Could you slow down just a titchy? Yeah. Um, marketing, all marketing. And then you'll click into search alerts within these. And then within search alerts, there is that bottom section where you can auto assign. So you can say, okay, I know this is going to be the mm -hmm. formula for this property boost, PB123 Main Street. And then you can set up the property alert to automatically start going at a frequency you want with the type of properties you want, with the price range that you want, and all that good stuff. Yep. So you can have it set up like this, or you can just let it roll. Mm -hmm. Either way, you're going to have an alert set up just you might have to have a, you might have a little more control of what it is if you purposely create that auto assign hashtag trigger technically i guess uh the answer to bob's question is like yes you can always automatically create a search alert. yeah <laughs> um but in in general probably for what you were looking for uh if they just come in without any additional work on your end there uh, if they just come in with the name, the phone number, their email, and uh, data associated yeah. from a property, then yes, a search alert can be created for them automatically. And then, you know, if you if you miss something and you're like, well, I'm not too sure about that, you can always go into your smart CRM and create a smart filter for your property boosts, and then go in there and knock out their alerts really quickly. Yeah. Talking about so there's filters. all sorts of ways you can go in there and find different information and, you know, create an alert, check to see who has market reports, check to see who doesn't have a smart campaign and all of that's in behavior. Mm -hmm. So you can keep track of your communication opportunities right here as well. Yeah. yeah. Um, one other thing here, Bob, uh, you, you mentioned the playbook. Okay. Uh, just this is kind of a, a good note to leave off on here, guys. Uh, the playbooks are great tools that we're going to be continuously evolving over time. Mm -hmm. This is a, a way to say promote a listing or gather your sphere and work your sphere. There's going to be some more features added to this, but think of this tool, the playbooks is a, a way to combine the tools such as like your landing pages, your squeeze pages with like marketing tools from like smart campaigns or search alerts. And it will set up how you can promote a listing. Basically, mm -hmm. the short of it is, is that these playbooks are going to help you interact with multiple tools to get exactly what the title is saying. That's it. Right. Um, there was ahead. also a question on, uh, can we get open houses to automate a, a listing alert? Yes. Because you have the ability to create your own hashtag in the app. Mm -hmm. You can create that hashtag. Then you can take that hashtag, go into marketing, all marketing, uh, listing alerts and set up that automation. Mm -hmm. So yes, you absolutely can. All right. Very cool. And I think so, we, man, we ran a little over, but it was a great yeah. session. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you again, Annalisa. So for everyone here, guys, remember uh, that recording is on that document that we shared uh, right up here. Okay. I'm going to reshare this again, guys, please make sure to jump into it.
when you have a chance. Uh, and we'll have those recordings there for you. And definitely check out our YouTube channel. All right. Yeah. All sorts uh, of amazing stuff there. It's updated almost yeah. daily. Yeah. And so when you guys are busy, you know, out and about doing your, your other stuff, because we can't expect you to be here every Thursday. I know. Or I'm sorry, every Thursday, every day, <laughs> uh, every Thursday, I'm looking <laughs> at Tuesday this like it's Thanksgiving. <laughs> I'm just, I'm thinking about Thanksgiving still, Annalisa. That's all. Um, <laughs> I'm thinking about a nap. <laughs> but with that said, uh, check out that YouTube channel. So that way, when you guys uh, are out and about or too busy to attend our webinars, you'll still get a notification if you subscribe yeah. to our channel. So, uh, yeah. And if there's it. something you're interested in, let us know. We'd be happy yeah. to cover it. But we're just here to kind of like uncover some little Easter eggs, some little gems to help you le successfully leverage KD Core because it's a wee but powerful beastie uh, that you can easily utilize and have it work for you so thanks okay. for being here and learning with me today and i hope you have a great day yeah guys have a good one stay safe be healthy and thank you again Annalisa. thanks bye-bye